People need water every day, so Pueblo people had to live close enough to a water source that they could walk to to meet their daily needs for water. The VEP computer simulation determined the location of all the water sources in our study area and then measured the energy that it took Pueblo families to walk to those water sources to meet their daily needs for water. It also evaluated how drought affected those water supplies. One of the things that's interesting about the area that we're in is that there are relatively few rivers in it. There's a nice river up in the northeast and then there's a river that is fairly constant along the southern margins of our study area. But in between those areas there were very dense populations and so it's always been a little bit of a puzzle as to where people would be getting their water. We did our very best to locate all the springs and all the seeps and all the very small streams that might only be running when there's runoff and mapped those and included those as water sources in the simulation. And what we found was that on average households families wouldn't really have to travel very far to get to an adequate water source. That water is a little bit more common on this landscape than we thought when we first started studying it. To understand the way in which these springs and seeps might have flowed in the past, we worked with a hydrologist who at that time was at the Colorado School of Mines named Ken Colm. And Ken and one of his graduate students, Sean Smith, made a model using specialized hydrological software. It was a very elaborate production, but the finding was fairly simple and straightforward, and that is that it did not appear that these springs and seeps would be running dry at critical times, and it doesn't seem, for example, that springs and seeps running dry could be used to explain the depopulation of this area in the 1200s.